All right, guys, in this part, I'm going to talk about context, which is simply a way to pass along data and other dependencies when you're calling the agents. You may have noticed in the previous parts, whenever I do stuff like guardrails or handoffs or tool invocations like tool calling, the functions are required to have a context passed in as the first parameter usually. So up to this point, we've been doing run context wrapper with none as the subtype. So that is what we'll be learning how to use today. So the purpose of a context is again, like I said, to pass along data. So first you're gonna define the data that you wanna pass along. So this will be a user profile class that has an ID for the profile, a name, and then also a shopping cart. So the idea is whenever you call your agent, you're gonna pass this user profile an instance of it with these you know, values filled out to the agent so that every time we call a function like a tool or a guardrail or anything like that, the function will have access to our user profile. So this is a very important note. The large language model for the agent does not have access to the context. This is purely for our functions, for our code to use as we're running through the agent process. We're gonna make a very simple agent application that allows you to plan a shopping list. So I guess a grocery list. And the agent's gonna have access to a bunch of tools. Like for example, you may want the agent to be able to get the user's budget. So maybe access their bank account or something like that. We're just making it up. So we're gonna define a function called get budget that we will make available to the agent. And like I said before, every single function that is part of the agent, such as a tool call function, will have a wrapper, a context wrapper. So run context wrapper, which we then import from agents, right? And instead of doing none, now we just replace that with our user profile context type that we created. So now every single time we call this get budget function, or rather the agent calls it, we will have access to the data in the user profile that we pass in when calling the agent, okay? So for example, if we want this function to get the account balance of the user using the user's ID and their link to bank account. So for example, something that we can do with this is that since the wrapper, if you do wrapper.context, the context here is returning the actual user profile type, this here. So since it has access to that, we could, for example, use the user's ID to call out to a third party API to get their budget, like their bank account balance or something like that. That's, that's probably an extreme example, but that's something you could do with that. So we're just gonna print out getting account balance so we know when it's called. And then we're gonna extract the user's ID by doing user ID is equal to wrapper.context.id. So we're accessing the ID from the user profile. And then now at this point, we're just gonna pretend we're fetching the account balance from a database using the ID. We're not actually gonna do that. Just to keep it simple. We're just gonna return $100. So the user has $100 in their budget that we can use for our agent. Okay, here's some more examples. I'll go through them one by one. We're gonna have another function tool search for item. So the agent is gonna pass in an item as a string. So like, I don't know, pasta. So it's gonna be pretending to search for that item in a database on like a, a grocery website or something like that. And then it returns the item and the price. So it's just gonna make up a price. But of course, you know, that would actually get a real price. So this is what the agent will use to find items for the user's recipe to see if it's within the budget, right? Um, so that's search for item. And then we have get shopping cart. This will use the past in context to get the user's shopping cart. So it simply does wrapper.context.shopping cart, return that, which is just a list of strings. So it returns that to the agent to use. But then we also have add to shopping cart. So the agent will pass in a list of items, item strings, and those will be added to the user's shopping cart context. So yes, the context can be used to pass that along the agent process, but it can also be modified for whatever you want to use it for. So we're adding onto the shopping cart as the agent does its thing. So later on, when we call purchase items, we could again use our context to get all of the items in our shopping cart and pretend to purchase them. I really hope that makes sense. So, so it's worth emphasizing the agent does not have access to the user profile context that we're passing along here, but the functions do, okay? So finally, we can create a shopping agent. So we're gonna do shopping agent is equal to agent, and then you define all the regular stuff that you defined before. So the name and the instructions and the tools and stuff like that. So I'll paste it. There we go. The difference though, is since we're now using a context with the agents, you can also do this. So you just provide user profile, which is our context type that we created. So now when you create your agent, you also specify this user profile subtype here that will be used for the context. So now finally, when we invoke the agent, so we can do runner.run shopping agent and then say, hey, we also wanna pass in that context, which is the user profile. So we can do context is equal to, so I'll simply say profiles, you could use your profile, ID one, two, three, name Alex, shopping cart is empty initially. So then we just pass it in and that's it. All right, let's invoke it now. So we say, hello, how can I assist you with your shopping today? So it's working. It did not call any functions just because it, we haven't really had a conversation with it yet. So what I'll do is make it so that we can have a back and forth conversation. So this code will be familiar. So we're just looping over and over, asking for the user's input. If they type exit, we'll exit. Otherwise, we're going to add to the conversation and then invoke the agent with our conversation items and then also our context that we now have, okay? So let's try it out. 
So we're going to say, hey, can you help me put together a shopping list? So it's getting account balance. So it did call the account or get budget function. So it used that wrapper and pretended and everything like that. And it gave us a budget and I gave the agent the budget. So it says shopping assistant, your budget is $100. What items would you like to include on your shopping list? Or would you like some suggestions? I'm looking to make some spaghetti tonight. So with that, it should, you know, already know. Here we go. So shopping assistant, great choice. Here are some common ingredients for spaghetti. It gives me all the ingredients. Would you like me to add these to your shopping cart? Do you have specific items in mind? Yeah, let's add them. So what it did is it first searched for all the items before adding them to my shopping cart because because the agent is smart enough to understand that it needs to know the price before adding it to my shopping cart so I don't go over budget. The whole purpose is to not go over budget. So it tells me with everything added up, it does go over my $100 budget. Prices are not real at all, <laughs> $85 for pasta, but it's working as you can see very well actually. So the agent is doing his job. Let's just tell it, um, help me narrow this down to make it more affordable. So it says, here's a more budget friendly list, blah, blah, blah. The total is 134, still over budget. Um, I'll just use some pepper for dinner. How about that? Okay, so I told it to add the pepper to my cart and purchase it. So I added them to my shopping cart with the add shopping cart function and then also called the purchase items function and it successfully purchased my pepper. So I'm gonna eat some pepper for dinner. Awesome, very low in calories. Our agents is working exactly as we wanted to. It's helping plan a grocery list using our budget. So it's actually a pretty useful agent, I would say. Um, you just have to hook it up with actual databases and stuff like that. Um, but the, mo the most important thing, of course, is that you can see how the wrapper is useful here. It's able to access data, modify data, like add to our shopping cart, so that later on when we do like purchase items, it has direct access to that shopping cart and can just, you know, purchase them. So you can do all kinds of stuff with this, whatever you can fit inside of this, you know, class here. So it's up to your imagination. But I'll just give you guys one more example of why a context is useful. So before... I showed you guys that uh, with guardrails, guardrails also have a function to find, right? The cheat detection guardrail from last time. So this is our study helper agent that has a cheat detection guardrail that will detect if you're trying to cheat or not. So we already know about that from before. So I modify this a little bit so that the cheat detection guardrail function also accepts a context type of user profile. So we can see the definition up here. This one has an ID, a name, and if they're admin or not. So the way that this will work is every time the guardrail is triggered to detect if it's you know trying to cheat or not, if the user profile admin boolean is true, meaning that they're an admin, we're gonna bypass the guardrail. So they're allowed to cheat if they want to. So if they're an admin, we'll just return tripwire triggered false and then also an explanation of admin bypass. So when we invoke the agent, we're gonna pass in that context, the user profile with some basic data. So since they're admin, but they are trying to cheat, it's gonna allow them to bypass and we don't get an exception. So it didn't trigger the guardrail. So it gave us an answer. But of course, if I make this false, it will be triggered since I'm no longer an admin. So something else kind of interesting is that if you call any other agents, you can pass along that same context. So context.context, .context, pass it along. So now this other agent, the sub agent here will also have access to the, the context as well if you want to do anything with it for that one as well, okay? But anyways, hopefully this video wasn't too long. Now you guys should understand what this run context wrapper is actually for because we've been kind of ignoring it up to this point. So yeah, that's how you can pass along data during the agent's life cycle. So thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you guys next time.